that I've had this bike, uh, hopefully you can hear me, the wind noise is a little louder today, but now that I've had this bike for about a week, uh, I think I can talk a little bit more, a little bit more about how, uh, how much I like it, how I feel about it in general, and it's still pretty good. Um, speed and everything wise, much better than the EM2. The only thing I haven't really had a chance to test yet is the range. And that's just because I haven't had a day where I've had to go out the whole day yet. Um, I haven't had a longer ride that I've had to do. So basically the extent of my uh, rides whenever I go out is basically what you're seeing now. Um, which is from my house over to the mall to get whatever I'm getting and then home. Um, occasionally, slow down a little bit, occasionally I'll, uh, I'll go up to like the top of the mountain area just to go ride around. Um, but I haven't really had the chance to do a longer ride yet. And hopefully I do, I gotta adjust that right mirror. Hopefully I do get that chance at some point. Um, but as of now, I just, I haven't had it yet. But, uh, I still think I can give a bit of my opinion on the bike in general. Um, and, yeah, um, it's, it's quicker than the EM2. I'd recommend this over the EM2. Um, That's fine, I can do a little loop around. But, yeah, so in terms of upgradability, for example, um, and usability, and just everything that I've seen so far on the bike, including just how comfortable it is to ride, it's better. Um, like, it, there's... Anyways, what I was going to say is there's more to it than, you know, just top speed, range, that kind of stuff. Like, it's it's a bigger bike, first of all, um, but it's also, it's definitely more comfortable to ride in general. completely get used to riding it confidently like I would my EM2 for example. It's my EM2 obviously I had for a year, I knew how hard I could push it, how hard I couldn't push it, um, you know, especially range, like I knew how far it would make, it would get me. Um, this I... I don't know yet, and I'm a little bit concerned, not not super concerned, but a little bit concerned because I was told by uh, another person that has one of these over on Reddit that the max range they can get is 15 kilometers, which worries me. Anyways, which worries me. Um, you know, 15, 15 kilometers of range is definitely not enough for me. Uh, the 30 or so I was getting in my EM2 was barely enough. So as long as this thing can get at least a little bit more than that, I should be fine. Um, you know what, we can pull over for a second here and actually show you guys show you guys the bike since there's no one over here. So, the main reason that I ended up getting this 
is one brand new batteries versus batteries that are a year old um, you know it, it gives much better range overall uh, and it's you don't have to deal with the degradation when they're brand new batteries um, but also the reason I picked this over just getting a new EM2 or an EM3 or something like that is I like the look of this more like I said in my other video um, it's a wider bike in general it is taller but it's also a little bit uh, or I guess longer taller and wider is what I meant to say um, but also just the the more aggressive look to it so like you can see the headlights they have the DRLs around I'm not sure how well you can see without me like getting low with it <laughs> it's uh, DRLs that go all the way around um, it's got projector headlights it's got you know everything that I wanted for my EM2 uh, after having the EM2 so long and looking into upgrades for it, it has everything that I was going to upgrade in my EM2 anyways. Um, batteries are something that I'm going to need to upgrade eventually, uh, but that depends on if I'm going to keep the bike or not, because as I've said before, I do have a motorcycle license test coming up soon so I can get a real bike. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to get yet. Apparently there are ways to get these legalized as proper road bikes. Um, with uh, a few slight modifications and if I did that then I could just upgrade the motor whenever I wanted to, upgrade the battery whenever I wanted to and not have to worry about anything which I think would be pretty cool um, to have something like this that's electric. Granted there is no fast charging um, but get, I don't know, 150 kilometers of range out of it. That's more than enough that I'll ever need in a charge. 150 kilometers of range uh, I don't know 120 top speed. I don't need something super crazy. I just need something that will get me from point A to point B So that's kind of what my plan is um, And I think what I'm gonna honestly just being completely honest here What I'm gonna end up doing is getting my motorcycle license this month or next month and then once I have that um, Getting the Yamaha R3 or a RC 390 or something like that I'd love to stay electric, but getting an electric bike from someone like Zero or uh, someone like that, it's expensive because personally I'd want the quick charging um, where if I'm going on a longer trip, I can just charge it up whenever I go, chill for like an hour and then be good. So yeah, uh, hopefully that kind of clears up what my plans are here. I know I got this pretty late considering I'm getting my license soon, but also it just adds on to it that hey, I have an actual motorcycle license with this so there's no issue. The fact that it's an uninsured motorcycle, whatever, because it's an e-bike, um, you know, at least I'll have the motorcycle license that I can point to. So there are a few, I guess you could say, issues um, that I've noticed since I've gotten the bike. Nothing major, nothing that would make me rethink it or anything like that. Like I said, I love the color, um, but there's just a few small things. Like here, there's a little bit of a nick to the paint here. Um, that's really the only one there's that there's a few scratches in some places very very minimal that you wouldn't notice like there's one here that you wouldn't notice unless you were looking for it um, there's a little bit of a scuff there but other than that not really a lot of issues um, the guy did say that this tire was on backwards looking at it I don't know if it is uh, I know there's some tires that are purposely mounted this way and I'm just trying to get in contact with the manufacturer and see. Normally there's an arrow printed on the tire, but there isn't on this one. Um, I'm also kind of curious if this has been upgraded from stock, because on their website it says that the rear wheel is a 16 inch uh, hub motor, the front is a 17 inch. That's not what's here. It's a 17 in the front, 17 in the rear. So I wonder if that's maybe been upgraded a little bit. Um, yeah, but there's a few other things that I wanted on my EM2 that this has just stock, like hazard lights. Uh, something the EM2 didn't have, so I wired in my own kind of custom thing, which worked, but it was a pain in the ass. This has proper hazard lights. Which look great. Um, oh, maybe you can see the DRLs there. It also has red demonized built into it which I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see during the day. But the projector headlights right, light up red, the whole thing. It looks really good at night. Um, yeah. 
anyways, hopefully that kind of covers some of the things. I'm still waiting for a new mirror there. Um, it's not the end of the world. I can still see behind me, which is the point of a mirror. But, uh, yeah. Um, also, in my research, this rear seat that I thought I was going to have to get through Armada, um, I wasn't sure if it was a custom thing for this style of basically Chinese import bikes or not. This is, as far as I can tell, literally just the rear seat from a uh, Kawasaki Ninja 300. Because obviously this whole bike is basically based on the Ninja 300. Um, yeah. One of the other things I've done since then is just for my own peace of mind, and I don't want to scratch this tank up more than it already kind of is, is I purchased a uh, tank grip there, which actually looks pretty nice. At least I like the look of it and tank grips here. These have been sticking on pretty good. The Amazon reviews said that they came off over time. If that happens, I'll let you guys know, but yeah. Also, since this is a pretty much empty area, I can show you some of the other things I came across on this. Um, namely these buttons here. There's also a TF slot here, which I'm assuming is just to import music. Also a USB charger, so I could theoretically just charge my phone. But these uh, I'm assuming that's full volume. Anyways, these, if I push them, like here's the bottom one. I'm not gonna... Oops. Anyways, that would keep running, and it is... it's loud. Um, like, really loud for this bike. Which is an e-bike. You can have the engine sound. It revs the engine incredibly loud. There's also a police siren. Not police siren, actually. I'll just play it here. So it does that. Um, I guess I can just play through the engine rev sound here. There's like no one around. And it just kind of keeps going like that. Um, it would be nice. <laughs> Again, this is not something I'm going to use on the road, but it would be nice if you could have that kind of sync up with how much throttle you're giving it. I think that would be cool. Um, Anyways, you can see, just on that short ride here, the max I got was 62. Part of that's because I'm not just pushing it down the road. Like, I'm not trying to go 80 everywhere. Um, I went a fair speed. Whoop. <laughs> went a fair speed. Uh, and, you know, it didn't go crazy fast. Speed limit there is 50. I went 62. Um, obviously, if I was paying attention and not recording the video, I probably would have gone a little bit slower. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, let's continue over to the Walmart. I'll grab some stuff there, and then I'll record going back, and if anything else happens, anything happens. And yes, you can use all of those buttons as you're driving. Find a close parking lot, close parking spot. I don't know what I just said. <laughs> 